Hello and welcome back to the latest episode of the Master of None podcast. I'm your host as always, Stephen Murphy, and I have a very special guest on today. We have Jarlett Regan, the man, the myth, the legend himself, uh, and we're chatting a bit of basketball. So Jarlett, thanks for joining us. How are you? Really good, man. Really good. Under the circumstances is what you have to add anytime someone yeah. asks you, how are you doing nowadays? Uh, yeah, look, I mean, I'm pretty good, relatively speaking. Yeah. Yeah, I know obviously with the latest lockdown and stuff like that, we're sort of, everyone's a bit doom and gloom today as well, but... Um, yeah, but not the case in England. Up. England don't give, well, England does care, but England will not be entering a level five situation. I'm, no. like, I'm really proud of Ireland, to be honest with you. I'm really proud that Ireland is uh, going to do this together in a bid to save Christmas, clearly. Because Christmas yeah. is the most important thing ever. Yeah, <laughs> and, uh, exactly. Yeah, I'm really proud of Ireland, and you know, I, I'm a vulnerable wife. So there, there's yeah. part, but part of me that wishes that uh, the British government would have the balls to do it, but uh, it's not likely to happen. Yeah, I know. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Everyone, everyone would. I think everyone's comfortable sacrificing a few weeks if we do get a good Christmas. So let's hope yeah. that happens. But anyway, enough about COVID and stuff. We're here to talk about the basketball. So I sort of I've been badgering you for the last while, Jared, to come on and talk some hoops, and you've eventually caved in. Uh, and I thought of a few things we could talk about. Obviously, with the NBA being over, I think it's a topic of debate. Is obviously the goat uh, argument that keeps is being rearing its ugly head again. So I said I set you a task. Basically, I want to hear your top five players. I have my top five players. Then we've also sort of uh, a few players we dislike throughout the years, uh, which could be fun as, well, <laughs> fun as well. I know it's so it's so negative. I feel so bad. But uh, yeah, well, look, it's uh, this is you know the, the the beauty of what we're doing here today on your podcast that it recognizes the soap opera of this thing. Mm. Uh, I don't know if you've listened to uh, that new podcast about Tim Donaghy, uh, the kind of corrupt NBA referee, mm. inverted commas. And, you know, it called into question whether the NBA is actually kind of a, a kind of a ballet and whether it's actually a, a, an athletic contest at all, which of course it is. Mm. But uh, it is built on stories and to have villains, we have to have heroes. To have heroes, we have to have villains. So yeah, that's why I believe this top five and goat stuff is uh, so interesting to people because the characters are why we're watching it. Yeah, a hundred percent. And I, I agree completely. And it's it's a, it's, a, it's a, I agree with the soap opera analogy. Like you know, with with being in Ireland and England, we don't get to see a lot of games live because of the time difference. So part of the interest to me is always like what goes on behind the scenes, the you know, guy's social Completely. media accounts. Yeah. Like yeah. J.R. Smith, has he got a top on? Has he not? We just <laughs> don't know at any time. So part of that is, 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 before we get into this though, Jared, did you enjoy the NBA bubble? Obviously massive success with, with COVID and stuff like that. But uh, mm. what did you think of the whole sort of the bubble? And uh, did you think that the basketball lived up to the hype? Look, there's a there's a few things in it, right? There's a few ways of looking at the bubble. One, we got basketball. We got to enjoy an NBA season climax. And that was sensational. <laughs> That's an incredible logistical achievement. Mm. And David Silver and everybody that did it, and the amount of time all these people were away from their families in order to supply entertainment to people. I mean... It was so brilliant from that perspective that you kind of, we will never, you and I will never know how difficult that was to pull off. But it has to be up there with running an Olympic Games, a Tour de France. Uh, uh, it, It was mental that they pulled it off. And also to have done it in such a way that, God, it was entertaining. Like there was, man, mm. there was, there was a few buzzer beaters that really will stand out. Like the Luca buzzer beater really uh, stuck out with me. Um, the inclusion of fans in the backdrops mm. really, yeah. I thought that helped. So, oh, these are all tiny things, right? Because I'm going to get to my big negative. Um, they, we could see fans actually responding in real time to plays. Mm. And in that way, the kind of crowd noise that is you know, on a, a loop made sense. Whereas when you're watching the Premier League, you know, and Virgil van Dijk gets his leg taken out. And yeah. The 
they've kind of they've got a sample of the crowd going you fucking pray to me yeah <laughs> it doesn't it doesn't yeah. work but uh the big downer is the absence of the crowd obviously made it but more pickup ball right pickup ball as ever anyone listening to this knows is what we watch on those instagram accounts during the summer when the game isn't played and for me is one of the ways that I have attracted people back to basketball that have quit on it. I know a load of comics who I'll meet backstage and they're like, I don't like NBA. I used to like NBA. Then I'll go, watch this. And I'll show them Kevin Durant at Rooker Park. Yeah. Hitting seven threes in a row yeah. and the court getting invaded. And I'll say to them, how many times have you seen a Premier League player play football mm. in the off season with randomers? Yeah. But they don't. The love yeah. of the game and that those beautiful pickup runs say, they speak to the you know the love for the game that these players have and for all the cynicism about the money and the endorsements and you know how uh, precious they all are pickup basketball is a beautiful thing so to get to watch it in this kind of setting with refs it was bizarre unusual beautiful wrong and right all at the same time so a long answer to your question i fucking loved it <laughs> yeah same because we all heard going into it, it was like this is not this might not happen and then you know a few cases at the start and all that and we we're all panicking and i was like oh i kind of you know i had my heart set in a bit of basketball i might be taken away but and I, I think it actually led to even better basketball because no teams were traveling there was no you know issues with that there was no travel so those mm. people weren't tired as much and yeah, we saw you're gonna have calling a prick from the stands. Yeah, exactly. No yeah. Stands <laughs> and we touched, you on, off. we touched on Luca because I'm a massive Luca fan, and I was close to putting him in my top five here. <laughs> I wasn't not yet. Really? He's, no, I'm not not yet. But I'm a massive Luca fan. I think he's absolutely incredible for someone so young to be doing what he's doing. It's just incredible. But right. we we got a we got a chance to see a player like him shine throughout this because you know he, he low down the playoff kind of ranking, but. To go up against the Clippers, and obviously the Clippers did what the Clippers did, but at that time we didn't know they were about to collapse. To put on yeah. a show like that with pretty much very basic help, it's just incredible. And I, I really, I really, I'm looking forward. And I, God, thank God, or please God, he stays healthy because I want to see that lad in the next, for the next 15 to 20 years, play incredible basketball. But uh, yeah, enough of the bubble. I set you a task, Jared. So I think what we'll do maybe is we'll we'll go from five to one each, and we'll we'll start out with each other's five. So give me your fifth best player of all time, in your opinion. Well, I I, uh, I kind of took a different attitude because I think that actually the hard part isn't one and two. The hard mm. part is three, four, and five. Three, four, five, yeah. Uh, yeah, uh, because... We can start at know, one then uh, if you want and work down. Well, I, I, I'm happy enough to start, start at five uh, because I just think the, there's a million ways to skin this cat. We're obviously talking about all time, right? So we're comparing players across eras. Uh, and Which is for silly, really. Don't, no, <laughs> yeah, the game is not the game that it was. I mean, Will Chamberlain was defended one-on-one. <laughs> Nobody had yeah. a fucking chance. Against five foot six him. white people. Uh, that's not yes. going to end well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. Like, I mean, he did, he did have other seven-footers up against him. But at the same time, if you could get the ball to him close to the basket he was going to be able to, if he caught it high enough, pivot and drop it in the hoop. And I'm not diminishing all those points, but some of those points would not happen today. So does that affect your decision to put him in a top five like this? Yes. Uh, yeah, um, so for, for, for that reason, I put Kareem in at number five, uh, which is you know to me there has to be a center in your top five all-time players and kareem like i don't take a view of this as i say the skinning the cat a million different ways to me you need to look at the whole person this isn't about uh numbers this is about uh the greatest nba players of all time that concept of what a player is and what their power can be socially and politically emanates from Bill Russell and Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. So for that reason, 
uh, alone, <laughs> along with <laughs> the incredible accolades that he achieved in his time, I had to put him in as number five. Any any contest on that? No, no, I I won't spoil mine. But no, Kareem, I totally agree, and uh, should be in the con- conversation. He, I agree with the Will Chamberlain thing because that's so far back. Kareem wasn't that far back. It was what late in the eighties, wasn't it? Late eighties, pretty much when he finished playing. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So still very much you know recent enough. So, and you know had the most unstoppable shot in the NBA. So that has to yeah. count for something, I think, with the skyhook. So, yeah, uh, and literally invented that. Like, I yeah. know that people won't say that that's necessarily true, but is the person that invented something the person that does it the first time? Like, do we regard Henry Ford as essentially the creator of the modern car? And he wasn't yeah. the first person to invent an automobile. No. But he made it... Usable. Uh, usable, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Are you surprised no one else has tried to use a, a skyhook? No one seems to use it anymore. It's a, it's a funny one because it's quite like the granny shot from the free throw. Yeah, <laughs> it doesn't look cool. Mm. Uh, it seemed like, like I remember lads doing skyhooks when I was uh, in secondary school, and it, it looked like it made you look shit at basketball. <laughs> yeah. You're essentially running away from the basket and your defender <laughs> and going, I'm going to get a shot up any way I can. Yeah. It's like a last resort Hail Mary shot if you're not seven feet tall. Yeah. And Kareem uh, Abdul-Jabbar. Because it, yeah. it's just the angles of it. It's just the geometry of uh, releasing a ball above hoof height. So when he would be extending up from one foot with one arm over his head his hand is throwing the ball downwards at the hoop. <laughs> Whereas when you and I do it, yeah. it is actually a Hail Mary shot. We're chucking it up. Poison? Yeah. More, well, if you think about it, the jump hook is the, off the two feet. Mm. Uh, that kind of replaced the sky hook. And I definitely was uh, someone who used to throw jump hooks big time. <laughs> I, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, no, I have no problem with that selection whatsoever. My fifth selection is, uh, I think people won't necessarily agree with me, but I think overall, I think it has to be the top five. And it's uh, Tim Duncan. Uh, I, I think, yeah, I think most people would have him near the 10 spot. But I think when you look at the stats, when you look at his career, the longevity, the, the, the se- like never had a losing season, never missed the playoffs. Uh, like one of the most beloved teammates of all time. Plus, and he's boring also, human beings of all time. No, if this was a fashion list, he <laughs> wouldn't be top fifty million. But it's I'm not talking about that. I'm not talking about personality. The uh, no, the winning and the, the seasons and the dynasty and all that is enough, nearly. But the, the stats to back it up, he's a five time NBA champion, fifteen time All Star, of which ten were first team. So he's basically the best center in the league for ten years. By by that mm. by, by that reckoning, two time M- M- MVP, Finals MVP three times, and probably the one Parker one was questionable enough at the time. I from what I can recall, uh, Rookie of the mm. Year six time sixth on the all time list for rebounds, fifth for blocks. Like why why not? Well, the stats are there. He's top five, top I'll ten in stats. Not. Okay, <laughs> I'll tell you why not. There's absolutely no way you can put that lad ahead of Kareem, right? Just I'm not saying he is ahead of no Kareem way on, on my list. Okay, okay. Yeah. But it, it, so this is, what, this is where we reach the point where you kind of can't look at the list one by one, that you've got to go, you're kind of filling out five slots, right? Now, yeah. here's, here, someone said this uh, was the best way to figure out your, your top five is to look at it from the perspective of pick up basketball which we talked about yeah. earlier which of these players would you want to be on the court with now you're picking him as your center correct uh no i'm possibly power forward. power forward yeah right so does that mean you're putting him ahead of all other power forwards well name me a better power forward i mean that is that's hard to do, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, right. what what's not to love about him? He's gonna get you points. He's gonna be amazing defensively. He's not gonna. He's a good teammate. He's gonna make okay. you look good fashion wise. Whatever you rock up in. <laughs> so well, I, I guess. I, 
my pro my problem with them right is definitely I I, I don't, I'm not saying he's soft. <laughs> oh, I disagree. I don't think he's. I'm not, yeah, I'm not okay, saying okay, he's soft. Okay, okay. I'm not saying he's soft, but in, in today's game, uh, I think that Anthony Davis would eat him for breakfast. <laughs> Personally, uh, I think that uh, that it, that you know Anthony Davis probably doesn't exist without him. That, yeah. That's true. Yeah. But uh, this is this is why this podcast is a lot of fun, yeah. because we're never going to know. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah. We, don't, we also don't know if Anthony Davis would have survived in 90s basketball. No. Because for those that don't know, Anthony Davis would have taken an awful lot of elbows to the back of the head. Yeah, I wouldn't be, <laughs> wouldn't be shooting the tree ball at all. Yeah, so that's yeah. why I can't say uh, Tim Duncan was a bit daft, because he took untold abuse and was, was going toe to toe yeah. with David Robinson every day in practice. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So that's your number five pick. Yeah. I, I think so. I, I, I've tried to think of a better power forward. I, I don't have him as my center. He played the last lot of his years, obviously at center, but, um, well, people, I, some I, people I, would count LeBron as a power forward. Well, yeah, exactly. And Anthony Davis probably should be a center if by today's reckoning, but he thinks of himself as a power forward. So, um, okay, you know, and Tim Duncan as well. The it's the durability. Like he never played less than fifty games in a season, and that one season he played fifty games. It was the locker year. Like he, you just got him every night at his best for God. If you were like a Spurs, a Spurs fan, how lucky were you to have that man in your life for uh, what mm. did he play for like eighteen, nineteen seasons? It's just incredible for his longevity and how good he was and how underrated he was nearly for a lot of the time. So I, I think he's up there. I don't think he's as I don't I think the fact that he wasn't so flashy is why nearly it goes against him. Mm. Compared to other so ones. So this is but. why five is hard, right? Because uh, I was the one that said to you uh, we should limit this to five. Yeah. And you can see right away that the second you give away one slot <laughs> no, when no. you're piecing this together, and for the listeners that are at home right now trying to try and write down their five, which I hope they are doing, yeah, you'll understand exactly how tricky this becomes. Because mm. you've just nudged People like, I guess, Kevin Garnett, Tim Duncan, and LeBron out of your forward spot. If you're viewing it as in, I've got to have a forward, a center, a guard, and and what? Yes, for my list, yeah, guard. yeah. If I was if I was naming an all time team, I yeah, I'm basically saying my power forward would be Tim Duncan, and I'm okay, okay with that. <laughs> okay, right. So are we on to my four. Yeah. So give me your number four. My four is uh, Larry Bird. Uh, and I know that will be that'll be one that people will throw their hands in the air and go oh <laughs> but uh, to me uh, Larry Bird is one of the greatest winners of all time uh, one of the greatest shooters of all time and here's the, here's the thing <laughs> Larry Bird gives everyone hope even though he yeah. was massively, massively tall, uh, this this guy was not meant to play in the NBA. Uh, if you're if you're struggling for NBA content uh, in lockdown, maybe uh, download any Larry Bird biography, unofficial or official, uh, or any kind of history of the Celtics, and you'll understand that this fella was literally working on power lines and working mm. as you know a laborer uh, and playing AAU basketball uh, shooting the lights out every single night but w- was initially meant to go to Indiana University and kind of just didn't didn't really work out so he had he was done he was absolutely finished and the world wouldn't have known 33 in a six jersey but he managed to work his way from that point to being the biggest player in the league and also the most deadly ice cold <laughs> shooting mm. uh, shooter passer uh, all of these abilities and skills that would along with magic you can't mention his name without magic would uh, bring basketball back from this now well known uh, malaise that it occupied in US culture uh, where nobody had any real time for it 
uh, his personality <laughs> and mixed with that skill made made people believe in this game again if you again if you have any doubt over what i'm saying i would say get on youtube and just look at his all-around game for a fellow who couldn't jump couldn't run uh he outworked and built himself into a player that could compete with anyone any night of the week and also let's be honest he is top of the list for greatest trash talkers of all time yeah 100 percent. i think counts counts for something like the those stories of telling people what he was going to do i mean there's trash talk uh and then there's trash talk there's the uh, you know being really insulting to people and kind of heart <laughs> and then yeah. there's there's the larry bird trash talk which i think is kind of borders on stand-up comedy while playing basketball <laughs> he would tell people what was about to happen before he would do it uh like imagine having that ability <laughs> in any part of your life that you could predict the future uh yeah and that, that is what he would do night in night out uh and for that reason he is my number four pick yeah, I, I again, I have no problem with that. Yeah, are, are we all agreed? T- one of the top three worst mustaches of all time has to be up there. It <laughs> I was mean, just like, so light. There so many, and it was <laughs> yeah, it was the color, right? He's blonde hair. <laughs> yeah, you blonde. You don't see many good blonde mustaches, no. really. It's no. kind of off limits. You can go blonde beard. That looks quite Swedish, but uh, yeah, yeah, shit as yeah, mustache ever. <laughs> yeah, and just one of the best shooters of all time, as you say, a cold, cold killer. Like win- winning a three-point contest with your jacket still on, that's yeah. a flex. That's but also know, walking that's... into the dressing room and saying, <laughs> "Yeah, uh, <laughs> who's, who's coming, coming second? second? <laughs> yeah, uh, but <laughs> and also true. needing the last like, three balls to win it and just yeah. sinking them all, like he is. And I think he paves a lot of the ways for Jordan because Jordan was very vocal early in his career, being like, "I need to get on this magic and I need to get on this bird level." So. Mm. That, I think he has to get credit for that as well. Uh, he's not my number four. I have Magic as number four on my list. Uh, very similar reasons yeah. to you in a lot of way because of you know who he was. Look again, I to touch on your point earlier on when you're comparing eras, you know, watching Magic dribble up the court, it's not Kyrie Irving. Do you know what I mean? He's kind of backing his way up the court because he's six foot nine and a point guard. So obviously on a skills contest, he's not going to win that, but. For what he for what he did for what he represented, he was an icon of the sport. You know, in the, a level that some people just don't don't reach. And he also has the stats as well. He's a five time NBA champion. You know, one of the all time assist leaders, one of the best, widely regarded as the best point guard of all time by a lot of players that, that played, and didn't play for four seasons because of his HIV. That. We're in around his prime area. I think there were late twenties, early thirties that he was that he had to take that off. So you can only imagine what his numbers would be had that not happened. And then to come back mm. again and play. Like he was a rock star. He was one of those players that my mother would probably know who Magic Johnson is and she doesn't know anything about basketball. Do you know what I mean? There's a sure. few players that reached to that level. Michael Jordan's one of them. Uh, and Magic Johnson is that as well. And plus as well, what he's done now, he's he's very vocal among, you know, in the league still and he had the Lakers job last year, which obviously ended terribly, but he's still very well known, whereas Larry Bird sort of has took a massive step back and sort of doesn't be in the media as much. So, But I think Magic, as I said again, there's probably a lot more skilled players that would take him on one-on-one, but for what he did, for what he represented, that you know Laker era uh, that he was involved with, iconic of the sport, so I have to have him in my top five, but he makes it on my four list. I think the, that no one can have a problem with it, right? Yeah. The, putting magic in your top five, there doesn't even need to be a huge argument over that. Uh, not least for, you know, finals MVP in your rookie season. Yeah, you I know. You didn't even yeah. recognize that that happened. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, uh, taking the place of Kareem uh, at short notice and playing center in that series uh, puts you in a position from your rookie year to like, we talk about Luca there at the very start, like Luca's under a lot of pressure. Mm. Uh, the world's watch and he's delivered every step of the way. 
but he wasn't finals MVP in his rookie no. year. How do you follow that? And what people forget about Magic is as well that the world kind of turned on him. Uh, mm. There's a period where he was seen as the selfish young upstart superstar who was trying to claim the team for himself. And the LA media fucking hated him for a while. But somehow he, he, he rode out everything. He, wrote, he got through so much turmoil in his career. And as you say, as a, like if we're looking at the 360 degree view that I mentioned earlier, uh, he is an ambassador for uh, greatness in that community. Uh, my wife doesn't agree in the sense that, you know, all the infidelity uh, and all of mm. that has to, you know, people will be rolling their eyes on what's that got to do with basketball. But for me, the definition of this top five is who the person was as well. Mm. And that we are now recognizing it in today's world that separating your public and your private life when you were a public figure uh, isn't necessarily a, a thing we can do or a thing that we should do. And, uh, you know, his behavior off the court at that time may have been of the time, but it doesn't, uh, it, it doesn't set a great example for anybody. No. And uh, if anything, Cookie is the, the hero who stood by him through the, the whole thing. Uh, the, and lots, like he doesn't get any credit for that comeback, right? Mm. Because... You know, I think when he won the All-Star Game MVP and then went and won the Olympics with the Dream Team, the people kind of were ready to be done then. I feel like people drew a line under it. But to get himself back in shape and come back in 94 and actually play some good ball, like that was that was something else, especially considering, like you said, you could nearly see on Magic that they didn't warm up or stretch. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> His body is not the most limber. <laughs> yeah. Like you say, the backing down the court, I'd forgive him of that because he had dribbling skills. He was able to uh, play point guard in an old-fashioned, traditional way mm. of switching from left to right hand. You didn't see him doing crazy uh, Alan Iverson type hanging no. the ball up in the air crossovers. Yeah. But was he effective? I mean, the rings will tell you the, yeah. the truth there. No argument. Uh, he's yeah. your number what? Four. Four for me. Number four. Okay, yeah. now, it, now it gets interesting, right? So, yeah, who's your number three then? I will give you, will I give you my, my top three, full stop? And then we'll yeah. get into the fight over how can you leave such and such out? Because yeah, exactly. look, once we get to MJ and LeBron, I assume we both agree that they're the two greatest players of all time. Uh, I believe, and this is this is probably a bit of recent bias, uh, but then I'm happy to fight anyone who'll dis who'll argue with me on this. I believe Kobe is number three. Uh, so take your swings. Is he in your top five? No, he's not. Um, he's not. I did. No, I feel. Yeah, it's a really, it's obviously a very touchy subject, but I, I, I feel like since his, uh, his unfortunate death, obviously, I think people have really moved him up their list because I've seen pe people years ago have their list and he was around seven or eight to nine, ten region. And I was OK with that. And then obviously, mm. since his unfortunate death, that has seemed to have bumped up. But uh, no, he's still, he would be nearer ten for me than he would be nearer five, um, personally, just because I think just the way I view basketball players, I, I like... I like great teammates and I like people who like LeBron tries to make the people around him better. I don't necessarily think that Kobe did in his prime. And he like the, the argument with LeBron and MJ, Kobe is more like MJ than LeBron ever will be because of their mindset and their, the way they play the game and literally physically how they're built. So it's, they're totally different players, MJ and LeBron with Kobe. No, I, for me, he never, never was, um, I don't know. I just, from just personal opinion, like obviously five rings, don't get me wrong. That was incredible. But three of them were with Shaq. And then the last two, you know, the last two were really more impressive than the ones with three, just because of, you know, having Shaq with you, obviously that makes it a, a tad bit easier. But um, that, that Lakers team with Shaq were the most 
dominant team nearly of all time up there with the Bulls. That three peat mm. that they had was just incredible. And stats back that up that, that they had a tough run through that Western Conference, beating Portland, beating Sacramento. They're not easy teams to beat on your way to championships. And mm. the second two, then obviously, you know, people disrespect Pau Gasol a lot, I think, in those kind of final two championships. Like he's an incredible player. Uh, and not, not that he did it on his own, but like that Boston series in, in where they went to game six or seven, I can't remember it is, like Boston's tactics were to let Kobe play hero ball and he f- still fell for it. That was not, it never crossed his mind to be like, I'm being double, triple teamed here. I could just pass to open players. It never crossed his mind. He shot up an air ball that met a world piece or run our test. I can't remember what name he was going by at that stage. I think it was met a world piece. Caught the air ball and laid it up that bet Boston in the game six that sort of, you know, broke Boston in that series. And I think sometimes stuff like that is forgotten when considering, uh, you know, legacy and greatness. And again, this is just me. I understand what he represents, especially in the last year and what he did for Laker fans. And, you know, the Lakers weren't, as you said, with magic, the way people turned on him, a lot of people turned on Kobe when Shaq left uh, and they kind of wanted him nearly gone that first year. So, um, look, at you know, make can, my case then. Yeah, you can make now a case. I hear everything you're saying, right? Yeah. And, and here's the case. Uh, Kobe, at his best, was better than everybody on your five. End of. Well, I disagree. At his best? But... At his best? Unstoppable. Better than Absolutely. Michael Jordan? Yeah. I would say yeah. he would, at his best, at his prime, I would say that he could take Mike. And I, I mean, I don't say that lightly because we both know that there would have been carnage. <laughs> yeah, well, the boat would have been mostly, mostly yeah. felt. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. But, and obviously Kobe doesn't exist without Mike. But what my point with Kobe is, is that his impact on the game and the things he did in his time in the game, coming straight from high school matters to me. I think that really counts for something because uh, they basically, he, he, was, he was the reason LeBron could do it. He set the template for how you could play a guard position from high school because to that point, it was Kevin Garnett types. Uh, he was maybe the first guard to make that jump or to do it successfully. Uh, and in in that time and in that window of time you you have to you have to give some form of credit to how other players that come in and play four years of college have an advantage he did not have that four years of you know failing in the back garden uh he failed on the national stage against the utah jazz uh, an embarrassment in his first season that most people just wouldn't have recovered from or at least would have been haunted by. Like I can, I, I, I have an affinity to the man because uh, we're not that far apart in age and I can remember being in secondary school and hearing about him <laughs> being like, what? <laughs> There's a lad in high school in Philadelphia who is scrimmaging with the 76ers. He was Norman Whiteside. He was a boy genius who could play at a pro level at the age of 15. And yeah, I know I can hear your argument about teammates and uh, all of that stuff. But if you're, if you're going to have Mike in there as a teammate, he, he, he's got to lose points on that front. He, Kobe operated off that playbook, as we know now. That was his model for a teammate. That was his model for the idea of how someone should behave with others. And it wasn't pleasant. It wasn't pleasant. I'm not entirely sure that that's who he was and that he was, in the same way, Bob Dylan was a replicator more than an innovator. He sponged up influences and bits and pieces and added them to a hodgepodge kind of patchwork quilt that became his game. But that's a skill. That in itself 
is remarkable that he wasn't, well, I do this. He was forever trying to add and make his thing better and more unguardable. Uh, I don't know if you can win that many rings, that many scoring titles, that many Olympic medals and score 81 points in a game and not be in the top five players of all time. I just don't know. I just, I, like, if that was me, <laughs> I'd be like, yeah. fuck off. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think I that's not enough to be yeah. in your top five. Yeah, yeah I know. I, I just, yeah, personally, yeah, again, it's all under personal preference, but I'm not being, I, I, I feel like I'm having my top 10 of all time, I don't think is, you know, people say that's disrespectful. I think that's still fairly good going by, yeah. any, by okay. any means. But he's not right. My so I'm five. dying to hear your third because really the three spot is the is the tough one. Because well, we third I uh, yeah third I have Kareem, so you right. have him at five. I have him at three because of again uh, what matters to me is like longevity in your career and then Kareem has one of the longest and best careers of all time and he played four years in college. Uh, so right. you think about well, we don't need to debate about it because I totally yeah. agree. Yeah, and just the fact that, that like so the social good. justice end of thing has to count for something as well. Yeah, uh, I agree. And, and Bill uh, Russell, you know, I've included you know, Kobe, somebody who's had, uh, you know, a rape trial and, uh, mm. you know, had questionable uh, personal uh, outside basketball uh, issues. But like Kareem, you know, Kareem was a game changer that way uh, mm. during a pivotal time in American culture when, mm. like we said, Nobody would stand up, but he would. Yeah, yeah, I agree. And just on the court, just incredible, you know, unstoppable in a lot of ways. Production throughout his years didn't stop playing until 41 and was playing in game seven in the NBA finals of 41 and being productive. And mm. I don't know if anyone else, yeah. I don't think, I don't even know if LeBron will get to that stage. He probably will because LeBron's an alien, but well, um, this is where it's all going to go now. This is where we're headed, yeah. right? We're headed this to this is, apex yeah. mountain. But, but Kareem uh, didn't yeah. have, Kareem didn't have cryoteric chambers and Kareem <laughs> didn't have, you know, uh, a masseuse 24 seven, you know, so you can imagine these players mm. with the modern technology, how they would be. And, you know, Kareem had just at that stage and yeah. to be the you leading point, what, what, you know, what was he eating like? You know, well, like remember, touching your Larry Bird point, Larry Bird was like, I remember hearing a bit, I'm a big uh, Bill Simmons fan, but I was listening to the podcast one time and he remember as a kid growing up, he was like, there was a great buzz around Boston because Larry Bird had given up drinking during the week and he was in great shape. <laughs> like that was the big buzz. Yeah, like, and his vertical has increased. <laughs> I remember, uh, here's a huge name drop on the way here. Oh. But one time I got to interview Chris Rock and oh, I asked wow. him about... Yeah, I asked him about uh, Michael Jordan being on Saturday Night Live. And he mentioned that, you know, about him being the biggest man on the planet at the time and how, you know, they eventually had to stop people from, you know, trying to get his autograph. This is like, you know, members of the crew, yeah. people from the building. But he said that they, uh, they were about to go to McDonald's with him. And our, that stuck with me because he was like, then they decided this is not going to work. Like we're not going to get across the road, the Beatles. Yeah. Uh, but I, I remember it staying with me because I was like, I remember at that time, this was 2009, I think I did that interview. And I was like, I don't eat McDonald's now. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah. And I'm a Before. flabby stand up comedian. <laughs> yeah. 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 I, uh, yeah I always think that stuff's mad. I love hearing, like you say, outside the game stuff. I think that's why I was so excited by The Last Dance was the mm. prospect of all this footage, extracurricular activity, all of that. I never, the, to me, the attraction of uh, entertainment was always backstage. And still to this day, my favorite part of uh, stand-up comedy is the hang afterwards, hanging out beforehand in the car, all of that extra uh, behind the velvet rope stuff. That, I love that. Uh, but I don't, I'm not sure we got all that with the last dance, but at the same time, it's better than nothing, right? Yeah. So, one, exactly. so you lead the way, one and two. Yeah, so one and two. So I, I, I have thought about this a lot, and I still have Jordan number one, and I have LeBron number two, but it, it's very close now for me, I think. Okay. Because at the end of the day, I think LeBron will have a better, when it comes to stats, will have the better career, 
and will have a longer career and will be number one in pretty much most stats or top five or top ten in all these stats. And Because, again, he has the advantage that he didn't play in college, came from high school, got those extra couple of years. He's been in the playoffs and long run the playoffs for the last you know, 10 mm. years, 10, 11 years. So his playoff records are obviously incredible. Um, but again... So hang I, on, are you making a case for LeBron being number one or LeBron being number two? No, he's number two, but I'm saying that I think if he wins another championship... Uh, or possibly even two, and he is the MVP of those finals. I think he will surpass. I think that right, he needs so to win at least reveal, another one. Before I reveal my one and two, okay, uh, I, I am gonna say what those that challenge you on this say, yeah. and that is that you can't say that one more championship is going to make LeBron leapfrog Jordan because one more championship doesn't change him as a player is your top five the question of who's the best basketball player ever or is your top five mm. and your one and two spot based on who won the most stuff well yeah in, in that case robert horry is my number one you know with his <laughs> seven or eight i think he's seven but uh yeah look well, you were saying that who won the most stuff is the defining no i'm not i'm it, it, i think it, game, it, i think it counts game. though i think it counts because it has to count of part of it anyway because you know there's a, charles barkley constantly gets abuse for not winning one which i find partly ridiculous obviously but then you also can't consider him one of the best because he never won a championship and you know there is so small so merit, one more ring much. takes LeBron into the one spot. If he's Finals MVP and he has, because <laughs> you know I don't want him to get. I'm not saying if he gets one more chip and Anthony Davis is the Finals MVP and LeBron has regressed, then obviously not. But I think it. I don't. It's it's really tough. It is tough. It to, is tough. tough. Yeah. This is why this is fun. Uh, it, like what? Like first of so all, so obviously Jordan's number one for you then. Well, I guess the numbers of this is that I have issues with the top fives. <laughs> yeah, is, I know. This, yeah. Is where we, this is where we get to. Uh, I came on your show to give you my top five, to hear your top five. And then when push comes to show, I don't like top five. I don't, yeah, we'll just leave it here. We'll leave, just close it off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's a reason why people talk about Mount Rushmore, which is a... Mm. A phrase I really have grown very tired of. Yeah. Uh, I just hate the use of it. <laughs> I just, I'm just tired of hearing people say it. Mm. I hate the idea of carving basketball players' heads into a mountain. <laughs> um, uh, yeah. But also there is an element of these are the forefathers. These are the uh, level. This is the level. And this is the top tier, Right. So when we go top five, we go into splitting hairs. Mm. We get into, yeah, well, what he did off the court, what he did on the court, how he is a brilliant businessman. I mean, really, we're talking about who are the elite. And the elite is a much wider category. And obviously, within that, there's going to be an argument of, well, who's the best of the best? And... There's a rock and roll element to this as well, in that is it better to burn out or fade away? And Mike's flame burned very, very, mm. very, very bright. So bright for such a short window of time, relatively speaking. Now that LeBron brings the idea of, no, no, your light can shine for a long, long time. Yeah. Uh, that it, it it raises that question of which is better. Uh, would we have more time for LeBron at this point in his career if he'd stayed in Cleveland, won eight championships and retired? I think so. I think LeBron's yeah. everyone's number one. He wins eight championships or even seven in Cleveland and fucks off. There's no question. There is no question in my mind. LeBron is everyone's number one player. But we're talking about imaginary. Imagine this. Imagine mm -hmm. that. Uh, the manner in which he's done it is modern basketball. Yeah. Three different franchises. 
Mike did it in the old fashioned mm. uh, model. One franchise, boom, 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 job done. I'm out of here. The comeback, I don't really even count it. And in a sense, if you read any books on it, to a degree, it was a, a farewell tour. Uh, even though, Christ almighty, he played some ball in that window of time. I even love, I don't know about you, but I definitely love dipping into Wizards footage just to see the kind of defense he was playing. Yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> yeah. It was absolutely absurd how he was shutting people down at his age. Like they couldn't deal with his defense. His de- the defense of Mike at that point, when his scoring and the you know ability to dominate in the other end uh, was was fading, was truly truly amazing. And I think that uh, we could do a whole separate podcast about the oh. unappreciated elements of Mike's game. So there's this thing of, like I said, the flame burning bright and LeBron's burning long. The question of, well, how long can his flame burn for mm-hmm. till it becomes more impressive than the sparkler? Right. We're getting close to Halloween. <laughs> yeah. yeah <laughs> I've got exactly. fireworks on my mind. Yeah. Uh, I don't know, man. You, you make a good case that if he wins one more championship, that suddenly this becomes bigger. I think it's more well, than one. The reason I, I say that is because the Jordan, the, the people who say Jordan is better than LeBron always throw the six championships out as a reason. So it, you can't then throw that out and then say like, oh, well, if LeBron wins six, then it doesn't matter because, you know, you, you have to be consistent with your... Mm. your, your and some people you, will say that this championship doesn't count. Well, yeah, which again, it's just like no matter what LeBron does to some people, I'm like, I'm not a LeBron lover, I'm not a LeBron hater. Uh, I, I have no issues with the man, but I don't, you know, he's not my mm-hmm. fair player of all time or anything like that. But to, no matter what he does, people will find ways to criticism. And we, we mentioned off the, off, the, off the court stuff as sometimes negatives and positives. What LeBron has done from where he came from growing up the way he did, like there's been no cheating scandals, there's been no drug scandals, there's been no drinking scandals. Nothing. He is squeaky clean. He's building bar. schools. Yeah. 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 He's literally yeah giving free education to kids, and he people still hate this man because of yeah. he he went on camera and said he was going to Miami. Like obviously yeah. that was silly looking back, but like when you is it really that bad of a thing to do when you compare it to some other things? True. Like and it's, he, you know my my son is nine years old, and I hadn't asked him the question uh, until is his, is his name Michael by any chance? It is. <laughs> I could, yeah, because I see your name is your name on Zoom is Michael Regan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, he. Uh, this is his account. <laughs> yeah. uh, I I hadn't asked him until lockdown who's his favorite player because I just assumed it was the player that was uh, on his telly and in his daddy's office at all times. And he told me LeBron, and I was like blown away. I was blown away because this is a discussion that had never taken place. Mm. And I was just so interested that for him and his friends, there was no question mm. LeBron's the best player ever to have lived and that they all feel lucky the way I did to be able to witness it. Mm. And I was like, okay. And what's the defining factor in that for you? Like what, what makes him the best player ever? And he said, <laughs> I nearly get a lump in my throat. Think about this. He said, Michael Jordan was a great player. LeBron is a great guy. (laughs) Oh, wow, yeah. And, and you know, uh, I do get a bit emotional thinking about that because the world of 90s basketball didn't require Michael Jordan to be a great guy. All we cared about was the game. And he, he took a massive strop with the idea of anybody questioning what he does outside of the game Mm. when the gambling thing came up. Uh, I mean, if we were watching The Last Dance, that thing came came off that he, the media was just becoming an intrusive thing at that time. 
So he was seeing the very thin end of the wedge that LeBron has had to live with since mm. the age of 15. 15, That yeah. counts for something. Yeah. That counts for something. Uh, Le- LeBron has been scrutinized in a way that no basketball player has and uh, has had to push back to the point of having to leave, like having to go somewhere else and start fresh. Uh, I, I think that uh, in another game uh, or loyalty to teams was absolutely everything, he would have retired. But because there was the option here to move, uh, yeah. he did. And we we need, we need the best basketball player in the world to be a spokesperson for social justice. Uh, Kawhi Leonard is not that person. No. And yeah, I yeah. I my my thoughts uh, on Kawhi are I'm not a huge fan of Kawhi personally, but Yeah, but like if you think about it, he's of that nineties old school. I'll stay quiet, I'll play basketball and you know, that's grand. But their best boy in school thing that people hate with LeBron. Yeah. That he wants to be the great lad <laughs> all the time. Yeah. Yeah, he's got ambition, but and I hate it. Hate that. Yeah, it's it's quite small town. Yeah, um, I'm nearly arguing for LeBron being number one, but the reason yeah. why I make Mike number one is simple, and it's that I don't have a memory of M- Michael being beatable. Mm. I definitely have a memory and vivid memory of LeBron throwing the toys out of the pram, (laughs) uh, pulling out the jersey and sticking out the bottom lip, blaming others. Mm. I mean, part of that is the scrutiny. I mean, look, here's the thing. When you buy your first album and you listen to it, that gets burned into the vinyl in your brain and you never hear music the same way you just don't you'll never hear another album (laughs) like that one that you played full blast uh in your headphones or in your room at that age the first time music connected with you i'm probably biased i watched michael jordan fly when i was 10 and i thought i'd seen a superhero (laughs) I saw him on the free throw line. I was like, I just saw someone fly. Yeah. <laughs> From that point onwards, I had swallowed the Kool Aid. <laughs> yeah. And I'm probably surrounded by the evidence. Well, yeah, I could see the Jordan. Yeah, the in the backdrop. <laughs> yeah. You can't, yeah. You can't. You can't shake your bias on on this kind of thing because, yeah. as we said at the start, this is stories. We're being sold stories. And uh, to an extent, I connected with the Jordan story like millions of others in a way uh, I never will with anything again, partially because no basketball story had been told. And whatever LeBron does, he'll always be compared to the movie that was on before him, which was Michael Jordan. Well, he doesn't help himself by going to record Space Jam 2 either. But still, you know, I mean, if that's a good movie, it'll never I mean, be reviewed as a good movie, though. People are just going to slam Space it. Jam was shit. Like Space Jam, like if we're going to get on to Space Jam, <laughs> we could do all. Uh, I, 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 oh yeah, I hope your evening's cleared. By the way, this is well, already coming up to an hour. <laughs> Space Jam was so bad. Like just when you think about the opportunity missed there, uh, like <laughs> I mean, the Looney Tunes live inside the Earth. <laughs> What I mean, where well, like, where is space? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, like that on on just at the, the very jump off point. Like it doesn't get sucked into a golf hole. Who yeah. wrote this shit? I mean, there was so much opportunity to do much more that I wonder. Like LeBron is funny. I'm sorry. Yeah, he, he is. Can act. Yeah, and uh, I like. The bar is very low. There is a possibility. I don't know, man. Like, well, again, 
I, I, like I, I was a kid when that kill film came out, so I love that film because again, it's a bit like you with Jordan. It's it's nostalgia. Yeah, really. It's yeah, yeah, and it's you know, I think that's a lot of people of a certain you know who watched Jordan play when they were younger. He'll always be the number one, and that's fair enough. And I think yeah, your your son, kids at that age, it's going to be LeBron because yeah, that's what they grew up watching. So I think I think what my final point on it was. <laughs> yeah, yeah, my, I love the film. I watched it recently enough, actually. It was on Netflix, and I enjoyed the hell out of it because, you know, it brings you back to your childhood, basically, you know? I will uh, tell you one tiny, tiny Space Jam thing that I was obsessed with. And this will tell you, <laughs> again, about the backstage thing that I was obsessed with. I knew about the Jordan Dome, and I was more interested in the Jordan Dome yeah. on set yeah. than I was in the movie. I didn't really want to go and I didn't see Space Jam in the cinema because to me, Mike in a pair of Jordan Evans and red shorts and just a raggedy old white t-shirt mm. taking on all comers, literally anyone. And using it as, a, as, yeah, using it as scouting. Oh, just I like blatantly. That, that side of that thing, I cannot consume enough information about the Jordan Dome and that whole side of kind of using, filming this movie to get one up on everyone in the league. It's just, it's yeah. evil genius stuff. It Love is, it. it is. And like, pretty blatant about it. Like, not even that like sly about it. They were just like, yeah, come on over. Um, yeah, yeah. yeah. Another yeah, weird true. thing to take from Looney Tunes is how, as a 12 year old, I was weirdly attracted to Lola Bunny. Who's a, <laughs> who who's, wasn't? Who wasn't? Know, you got like it in there. She's <laughs> moving around with no pants on. <laughs> oh, and everyone knows what rabbits do a lot. So it's, <laughs> it's, 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 you know, your oh, mind wanders funny. as a, as a 12 year old you know. uh, uh, I think yeah we'll leave it at that like, I think well, you made a good point I think uh, Jordan at his peak was better than LeBron at his peak and I think that counts for a lot so I think mm. yeah, I, he's still number one in my book because I've already said this analogy but my mom knows who, LeBron, who Michael Jordan is she does not know who LeBron James is yeah, that's the and she Jimmy knows Jimmy Kimmel uh, you're not famous until my mom knows who you are yeah literally, like <laughs> you know he, sir, he, yeah. was a, he was known everywhere and LeBron isn't he's known a lot of don't get me wrong but not to everybody but right we'll yeah. quickly touch on because i know you're a busy man uh how, how many no players worries, i have man. i have two i have three players that i don't like two are currently playing and one isn't but uh, i wanted okay, to get you, your you go first so yeah we touched i was on your instagram live last week so i already revealed one but uh yeah. james harden he's the current player i dislike the most because i think he represents everything that's wrong with basketball he's all stats no no metal he's no <laughs> Balls to be the the phrase of a bad word. I've seen him quit in his team too many times now, and oh. I've seen I've seen him fail too many times in the playoffs. Where I'm like, okay, I, I know who you are now, and I have never watched uh, like all the last two or three years has always been all oh, the the Rockets could do it this year, and I've never really been worried. The the year that they took Golden State to seven, and they lost Chris Paul was the only time I was like, okay, maybe, but even then they couldn't do it. Um, and I've seen too many times Game 6 versus Spurs in 2017 They're down 3-2 in Houston Chance to tie the series Kawhi Leonard is not playing He scores 10 points, 6 turnovers And goes 2 from 10 from the field uh, And then the Clippers The infamous Clippers collapse against the Rockets In 2015 The amazing comeback starred When they benched James Harden And they went on a what, ridiculous run to tie the game and, and they won and Clippers collapsed I've seen it too many times. He's not a good teammate. He's not a leader like LeBron is or like Kobe was. Uh, I just don't like him. I hate watching the Rockets play. It's boring to me. Um, have, I, have I said too much? About, have I gone too into too <laughs> well, deep? Look, in here's a couple of things I would say, right? So I specifically tried to get to see him uh, in the flesh because whatever way you look at it, he is the most prolific scorer in the league today. Mm. Uh, this man can get his shot whenever he wants it. Now, that counts for something, right? Does it make him unlikable? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Incredibly. The fact is, 
We could all, everyone, I'm sure there's loads of other players in the league that could get a shot anytime they felt like it. But who has the fucking ego to do it? <laughs> yeah, I know. Who has the ego to yeah. do it? This lad. Disappearing act. The only one I'd excuse. And it was one that really pissed me and my basketball buddies. <laughs> Meaning the three lads I text on WhatsApp. <laughs> yeah, basketball. WhatsApp group. <laughs> yeah, there were three lads who care. Was that one where he appeared to be sulking. It was like... Oh, his body oh, language is off. What's, fuck? what's going on here? Like he signed a $350 million deal with Adidas that summer after this sulk that he pulled in a game where he decided I'm not going to bother me whole. Mm. And that annoyed me in the same way as, you know, Liverpool versus Everton annoyed me over the weekend. <laughs> I could not believe what I was watching. Going to Bill Simmons, he had concussion. I mean, that's the, this is the tough part about this. Mm. There's loads of stuff that we won't, we don't know. Yeah, well, that is We true. don't know. I mean, there's Paul George. It's an absolute hammering in the media. Yes. And to all intents and purposes, looked to me to be a lad suffering with his mental health. Yeah, 100%. During all of this. Yeah. You know, we, we talk about being woke and being understanding and mental health being important, but he couldn't come out and say that. He couldn't, he couldn't come out and go, well, actually, I've been suffering with depression during the bubble. Uh, something happened in my private life. Nobody wanted to fucking hear it. I mean, yeah. the, the, the life these lads lead will never understand. No. That's it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I agree. The, 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 the yeah. whole. So anyway, I did try and go and see him in Brooklyn when they were playing the Brooklyn Nets. And uh, the morning of the game, he just, he's not playing. And I was oh, no. absolutely gutted. But we still went and had incredible seats. Shout out to Carl Robinson, my buddy over there. And... Uh, he got hooked us up with these amazing seats and we got to see Mello, who oh, yeah. at the time was definitely suffering with his mental health. And I think that he's been pretty cool about coming out and talking about that because, again, not cool. I mean, that lad's come back from the brink as far as I know. But in that game, he wouldn't, he wouldn't sit in on the timeouts. I was like... And this is the amazing thing about going to NBA games. You're like, you can go, you can really see w what's happening with the mm. players. It's one of the beautiful things about the game is how close you are to it. Yeah. If you, if you can afford it. Uh, yeah. So there's a timeout. Everyone standing there, including Harden, center of the timeout with the lads, chatting it all over. He's sitting on the scorer's table, fitting with his nails. And like, I was like, what? <laughs> What's going on? Yeah. Like, I was like, I couldn't believe what I was watching. And, and it seemed very show pony-ish that he was trying to yeah. show New Yorkers. I'm not really a Houston rocket, but fuck, man. Yeah, he is. <laughs> it's like going to work and not showing up at the team meetings. Yeah. You, 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 anyone else gets turfed out, but... It, there he is back in Portland shooting the lights out. Um, so do you have more than one or is it just... Yeah, one? so I just want to touch on them two others because I wanted to give one as currently <laughs> paying two and, then, and then I wanted to get one who's retired. But yeah. uh, it's actually, it's quite a segue because I hated, these, I hated these players when they played on different teams. And then James Harden and the Houston Rockets traded for Russell Westbrook and they oh, joined really? forces to be the Stephen Murphy hatred team of teams I would never want to watch. And Why do you yeah, act like Russ? It's the, it's, I'm just not a big fan of these stats patterns that just, you know, like that, that triple-double year where he was, like the, Stephen Adams stopped going for rebounds because they were trying to get him this triple-double. And I'm like, does it count if you're basically being given four to five rebounds a game because your center is not going for them? And it doesn't lead to winning. We've seen this when I'm sorry, it doesn't lead to winning when it matters. I should probably preface mm. it with that because the Houston Rockets have won 60 games and seasons and all that. But we've seen it like Kevin Durant left OKC because he was tired of playing with Russell Westbrook. He was like, look at how much fun Steph Curry, Clay Thompson's having over here, <laughs> passing the ball. And I'm stuck with this guy who regularly will pull up with 20 seconds left on the shot clock and shoot a long range tree, which he's awful at. And he doesn't seem to learn. 
and it would just sit, I'd be watching it being so frustrated because I'm obviously like gifted athletes, as gifted as they come athletic wise. Like mm. I'd say he's a nightmare to guard, but if he just changed the way sometimes he thinks or the mindset, he would be so, so good. And I just, I feel like it's, a, I feel like with Westbrook, it's definitely more of a waste of talent than what he's doing. And him and Harden joining up was just like the icing on the cake for me. I was yeah. like, oh, this is perfect. Do you think then, with that, that in mind, do you think there's an argument to say that if Russell matures, like in time to keep this amount of talent that he has, is there an argument to say that when maturity kicks in, he just has that paradigm shift that this shit that I'm doing isn't working, that he could be one of the great pickups by, oh, look, a team like the Miami Heat are the kings of this. Somebody that everybody's yeah. quit on. Yeah. They go, come to Miami. You'll have a great time with the lads. Yeah. Pat yeah. Riley will call around your house with the paper in the evening. Uh, I, I believe this. That I agree with you. And I've heard from people that have seen him up close that there's so much rage in the lad. Yeah. <laughs> It so is. angry. So, um, yeah. oh, what? <laughs> what are you yeah. mad at? Well, yeah. yeah. I don't know. I agree. Uh, yeah, he's, I think I think if that would have happened, it would have happened by now, Jarvis. <laughs> yeah. He must be he must be 30, is he not? It's 28, yeah, 29, look, 30. Man, I'm 40, and I tell you, 30 year old me uh was pretty blind. And I don't know what age you are, but like it is remarkable. Like, think about it. He comes into the league, he's 21 years oldish. Yeah. Uh, millions and millions and millions of dollars on mm. the big three. Himself, Durant, Harden, you lads, going to win the NBA championship. It doesn't work out in this media age. And people talk shit about you, even though you're trying to rest. <laughs> I know. For another nine years. Uh, I mean, any any one of those things, like that's not even to include everything that's gone in between, where he then gets the keys to the team. Uh, I mean, any one of those things is enough to melt anyone's mind. I mean, we see people posting on social media about uh, how, you know, I've experienced this in my life and now it's it really changed me or I've had a really difficult time with this. I know that a lot of people will go, they need to suck that up. They're being paid loads. Oh yeah. You know, Russell Westbrook, just the same way as LeBron, these lads have had a tough upbringing <laughs> in a lot of cases. And, you know, it can, it can really tell, you know, at times. And I, I do think that if he, like who is there an example of a player that had this paradigm shift and then became a winner? Uh, mm. It's it's hard to say uh, if there is, but it's possible. But fuck me, his attitude is he really needs to change, right? Because it's just not working. Yeah. No, I just it's, it's small things. It's just stop shooting trees or like only <laughs> shoot from the corner or you know what I mean. It's small things like it's just like you're athletic enough to go by people even if they know you're not going to shoot the tree or just mm. I don't know. I, it's I could be here. Oh, I damn. think he's got a he's got a better chance of like I I'm convinced Harden will never win a title and uh, you can quote me on this. But I think Westbrook has a better chance than Harden has because I think. I think, I think there's more chance of Westbrook copping on than there is Harden. I think at this stage, I think he's too far gone. Mm. But anyway, my third Who's the final retired one, one? Uh, Paul Pierce. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a fan of Paul Pierce. I've never seen a man chat so much shit since he's been retired <laughs> that I'm like, what are you talking about, man? Like, look, I mean, this is my problem. It, it's hurting his legacy because mm. he's talking so much. Like. There's a lot to be said for when you retire. Like, if, if you want to work in media, that's fine. But don't start like talking about your. He talks about himself more than he does about games sometimes. And you're like, that's not what you're paid for, man. Do your mm. do analyze the game. Don't uh, you're very knowledgeable on the sport. Give me your in, input. And he's what there I like. What I don't get is how they hired him. Like, I don't get how, you know, 
was there a huge demand for us to have Paul Pierce as an analyst? I well, can think of 10 other players that I'd rather yeah. hear analyze the game, including Hall of Famers like John Stockton, who you know can break down how, how the game should be played better than, than Paul Pierce could if oh, he studied 100%. for the next 10 years. Yeah. I don't get why he's being listened to and you know it does happen that somebody has a brief media career but he's definitely had a few words there reining it in because you remember he did the whole retirement of his jersey ceremony and he was pushing hard for it yeah like, he wanted it really well like yeah my night my night it was like there's zero humility there and i i agree that's very <laughs> hard to take when somebody is about you you clearly have an issue with yeah the me guys yeah uh, yeah it's, it's pretty me? obvious it's obvious isn't it this yeah, yeah i do like i think he said he's a better shooter than clay thompson like he constantly <laughs> talks shit about lebron and it's like like uh, what are you trying to achieve with this do you know what I mean no one's gonna be like you know what paul you are right uh, I yeah. think you're better than LeBron. And this, he, I hate the settling for the kind of uh, uh, Stephen A. Spot. I was going to say Skip Bayless, the way he's going. Yeah, like he, I think he that's wants what he's headlines. But, but do you, you, you know, ask the question, why would they hire him? I think that's part of the reason. Like, so people like us talk about it. Do you know? Yeah, he'll say anything. Mm. Uh, yeah. So here, here's my ones. Yeah, uh, give me your real one quick. Um. I chose baddies, right? So okay. I chose bad lads. <laughs> Can I guess one? Because I think I think there's no there's no point in having you know your favorite, least favorite person in a sport if you can't enjoy their their being a box. Uh, you kind of if we're viewing it again to go back to the opening minutes as stories. Who is the Hans Gruber? Who yeah. is, uh, you know, silence is a lamb's lad. <laughs> you want a, a baddie who you can really root against. And I have to say, you wanted to guess, first of all. Go ahead, guess. Is it Bill Lambeer by any chance? No. Okay. I no, I was no, I wouldn't even give him the steam because he, <laughs> he is uh, just an obnoxious. There's no redeeming features there. Uh, that's a fella who couldn't even buy, he, even his, his shorts would annoy you. And yeah. it wasn't, it wasn't, it wasn't pleasant to to watch that. Whereas someone who, what I what I look for in my most hated NBA players, is someone who you're like. You prick you. <laughs> and, yeah. And you shake your head and you go, man, so annoying. So my top two most annoying NBA players are Reggie Miller and Carl Malone. Um, oh, yeah. So I... Reggie. <laughs> Reggie was the little brother in real life and brought that mm. to the game. He, he only knew how to wind people up. That's his idea of crack. We've all been around that guy. <laughs> I'm only trying to get a rise out of you. What's wrong? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's how I play. Trying to get in the other dad's head. Well, that's no crack for me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He was so good at it, though. I mean, mm. think about it. He, he made that his calling card. That you you can play me, but... Uh, I guarantee you, I will get you more angry than you've ever been in your life. <laughs> yeah, and score thirty and, points, and and, and feed mm. off it. Like, yeah, the wonkiest looking shot the mm. game has ever seen. Again, gives us all a little bit of hope of us with the wonky shots, uh, and responsible for you know some of the yeah the most rewatchable. Uh, bad bad highlights ever uh, against the Knicks. Uh, I see you're wearing a Knicks top there, so uh, go yeah. ahead and throw that one in. My girlfriend's um, from New York, so I got to represent. Here you go. Carl mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, Malone is uh, is one of the annoying 
most annoying bad lads, just because you know he is a super conservative uh, um, man who thinks that gays are against religion. Yeah. Uh, and I was going to say, you, you know, he's a massive homophobe. You just know. Oh, it. You just, just by looking at know him. it. Just by his and accent. Was, <laughs> yeah. And even the way he, he, you know, thought he was a, a truth teller. I don't care what nobody else going to say it. I'll say it. Like, mm, yeah, maybe people aren't saying it, Carl, because <laughs> they're trying to be nice. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Give it a go. Uh, yeah. His comments about Magic Johnson drove Magic out of the game. Uh, someone in a, a your top five. <laughs> you've got to <laughs> you've got to have an issue there. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, and look, overrated in my opinion. That and that pissed me off as well. Himself and himself, him, him your, himself and Stockton were should have been inducted into the Hall of Fame together because without one, there isn't the other. Yeah, they were a one-two punch. Uh, a one trick pony that could do that trick so effectively that nobody could stop, could stop it. it yeah. And that, 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 if you play any sport, you will know that is one of the most annoying things when there's a lad who does the same thing over and over again, try as you might, you can't stop it. And that pissed me off something proper back in the day. Just, just that idea of, Look, you're not that good. You're just doing this pick and roll. <laughs> yeah. And a big mangy shot on him. <laughs> yeah, just, yeah. He pissed me off uh in, in that in that way. Now of today's game, my my third Yeah, who's one. current? Yeah. In today's game, uh, I have to I'd have to agree that James Harden is a representative of what's wrong and where the rules have gotten away from themselves that they clearly wanted high scoring games and they got them. I mean, we're seeing games going into the 140s. Mm. I mean, that, oh, there's got to be a happy medium there. There has to be a happy medium. I think 104 points is too much to be scored in a game uh, that's competitive where people are allowed plays. I may, I'm, I may be talking to my arse. I mean, I do love the game as it's right now. I love it. Uh, but, you know, he is he is a stats patter. He is a lad who is extremely conscious of his numbers. And that side of things is very hard. It's very hard to enjoy as a, as a fan. I'll tell you one player, though, uh, who people used to hate who I loved was Reed Wallace. Mm. Uh, I, I, like, he was demonized by the referees of the game because he had a mouth on him. And, <laughs> you know, he was made famous for the phrase, ball don't lie, which yeah, I yeah. think is the, is the best yeah. thing to shout at a ref. <laughs> yeah, 100%. Uh, if people, that podcast I recommended earlier, the Tim Donaghy podcast, I must look up the name of it here. Um, you know, he talks about looking sideways at a referee and getting kicked out of the game. And he was like, I literally looked at him. Yeah. And he threw me out. I've seen the clip. Uh, he is. He, he, in fairness, he's stink he, eyeing him now. He is. He's yeah, yeah. He say, stop looking at me. <laughs> yeah. But that's not, that, that, like, that's not the correct use of uh, technical fouls. No. I mean, it's seen as a last sort. That's the point. That one of the first things I ever did in basketball was I got a referee's qualification. It went over eleven, which was a brilliant thing that our coach did to show all of us how hard it was to be a ref. Mm. Was make us all qualify as referees. I thought it was so brilliant. Yeah, and good, shout yeah. out to uh, John O'Connor, Joe O'Connor, for doing that because all of us appreciated that getting a charge call right is hard but we were taught and everyone know, knew that technicals weren't for you know it's getting some kind of retribution on people yeah technical fouls were for 
when things were getting out of hand. I mean, that was, I really felt that Rashid Wallace was the one player that the Lakers couldn't guard. And if he didn't have the refs on his back the whole time, yeah. I do believe that Kobe wouldn't have the championships that he has because that lad was unstoppable back in the day. Yeah. And I, I kind of loved to hate him. Yeah, I got. Of, of the current players, I think the the player I can see making into that list, I think Blake Griffin has potential. Um, I I, lo- I love Blake. I have. To I like him. and I like Blake too. I do like. I can see why people dislike him though. Um, Does a bit I of stand up as well. Yeah, he's um, very funny. Very funny man. Very funny guy. Yeah. I think um, I think he gets a bad rap. Like I yeah. think he's. He doesn't have his body also, language can be off. Yeah, he also got a really tough ride by the Clippers in, mm. in that, you know, the way he, his whole thing was handled and how Jerry West lied to him. You have to feel sorry for him. You know, they brought him in and did the whole Jesus Shuttlesworth video, uh, bringing his jersey up to the rafters. No, no. They made him. him to Detroit of all Detroit. places. <laughs> yeah, literally the worst of all places. Yeah, uh, that's great. Look, Jared, I'll not keep you any longer. It's been fantastic having you on. Do you want to kind of say what's been going on in your life? Obviously, you're a very busy man. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> what's been going on in my life? If anybody has stayed this long into the chat, I know sure we are currently to... one hour and twenty minutes. I'm a, I am an awful talker. I, I, I talk for a living, and I love chatting hoops. So I have my own basketball podcast. If people haven't heard it, it's called Irishman Inside basketball and we have uh, season one is in the bag which includes conversations with George Mumford who was Kobe's sports psychologist Michael Jordan's sports psychologist uh, Roland Lazenby who was Kobe and Mike's biographer uh, this book behind me Michael Jordan the life was written by Roland Lazenby it is an unbelievable read he also wrote on the horns which is essentially the book that tells you everything the last dance didn't it's okay. about that final season and it is a banger get that book uh, uh so he's on the show and then there's a bunch of irish players on it like kieran donaghy uh sue moore and the greatest irish female basketball player pat burke uh and next season it's already begun we give a teaser episode with ron shelton who was the director of white men can't jump uh, i had so much fun talking to him we also have the author of Dream Team, the official book of the 1992 USA Olympic team. Jack McCallum is uh, the next episode in season two. But I've also got, as you know, a shit ton of other podcasts on the Irishman Abroad Podcast Network. And I'd love if people came over and listened to those. 100%. Yeah, that was quite the, the name drops there. I, I've had Pat Burke on that, my, my podcast. Uh, uh, he's such uh, a good man, isn't he? Oh, absolute gentleman. And just like, talk about giving everything that a podcast wants. He just chatted and mm-hmm. chatted. I doubt that podcast with him was two hours long. And I was like, really? look, going through it. I was like, I don't know what part I want. I, I couldn't cut out anything. I was like, he's just mm. so good. And he's told that story hundreds of times, but he still gives you everything he has. And mm. he's an absolute gent. So love him. Um, so oh, yeah, he's sign man, sign man. I've also DM Kieran Donnelly, but he never got back to me. So he's dead to me. Not good he's for the dead DMs. to me. He's he dead to not me. Not good for the DMs. He's not. I'm and where are you him. from? Where are you from, uh, Stephen? I'm from Calvin originally, but uh, you, see, been... you know he does have hang-ups that way. I know that, <laughs> I, I, and I will call him out here, Kieran. Yeah. I know that he thinks I'm a Jackie, and uh, you know I'm a Kildare man. But I guess if you are living your life with Kerry football in your blood, you yeah. probably still carry some bias. That said, uh, he did give me an unbelievable chat about basketball. As he calls yeah. it, great accent. <laughs> and, uh, he uh, he he really he, he really is an interesting character. So don't give up on him. I'd say, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. If I can get you his email address, I'll pass it on. It'd be worth the chat. It'd be worth the wait. The thing I've learned with podcasting, and if anyone's listening uh, who wants to know this or has even stuck around this long, is yeah, with guests, it is all about perseverance. You uh, persevered with me. I did. I, uh, as you said, I am ridiculously uh, busy with all of these podcasts. Um, but if you stick with it, with, with the guests, 
they they will eventually yeah appreciate that. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Oh, oh, they'll, oh, they'll just get annoyed and be like, "Fuck this lad, never go yeah, on that yeah. podcast." Possibly, yeah, but I'm I'm worth. Uh, yeah. Do you I'm really want make... that person on your show, though? <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Jared, I appreciate you taking the time out, as you said. Um, it was great to chat. I hope you enjoyed yourself. And, you. and you never know, we'll do it again sometime in the future. So I appreciate Absolutely. you coming on. Cheers, Jared. Good luck, Stephen. Thanks a lot.